Reinforce your main points and help students visualize with these quick and easy PowerPoint animations. I'm Sarah Fminkno, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use my favorite PowerPoint animations. These animations are a very quick and easy way to make any of your presentations more exciting, interesting, and engaging. So I've got my coffee, my PowerPoint's pulled up, let's get into it. Let's start at the beginning with an entrance animation. Entrance animations are a really great way to break up all of your information into bite-sized pieces for students. This way, they can be focused in on one piece of information at a time instead of looking at your whole slide filled with information. So for this example, I have a market forces slide with all the different forces listed in some boxes. So instead of having all of them appear at once, we'll go one by one through each one of the forces. So to do that, all we need to do is click on the box we want and click Appear. There are lots of other different entrance animations, but I do like appear, possibly fade, because they're not as distracting as some of the other animations. We want students to be focused on the information, not the animation. So we'll just click appear, and it's kind of hard to see in the preview, so if we go into our presentation mode, you guys can see right away we made a quick mistake. So our text is still there with the shape behind it, is the one that's animated. So that's because we didn't group these things together. So with PowerPoint, we can just go back. It's a very easy fix. Let's first remove the animation. Then we can click on the shape, hold down your shift key, and then click on the text boxes. Then you can shortcut with control G to group them, or in your home tab, you can click on arrange and then group from here. So now we can go back into our animations tab and click on appear for this first box and then let's go through all the other boxes as well. So with animations you will see a little number appears on the side and that's for what order your animations will appear in. So you can do them in your order or if you've made a mistake and want to change you can open up the animation pane and fix them on the here. So let's go ahead into our presentation mode and now we can check this out. So one click will reveal one box at a time. Then this way it's a little bit more flexible and you can reveal your information as you're discussing it with your students. Now let's go through my favorite emphasis animation. So this animation is not for when something comes onto your slide or leaves your slide. You wanna add a little something to it when it's already been on your slide. So for this example, we have a science example here. There's lots of other ways that you can use this, but what I want to show is that an atom, these protons, neutrons, and electrons do have movement. So it's not a stationary object, so we can add a little bit of a spin to this small diagram here. Before we add in that animation, let's go ahead and make sure that everything we want to spin together is grouped together. So just go ahead and hold down that shift key while you select the objects that you want to group. And then you can right click and click group or do it in the other ways that we said before. So now all of our items that we want to spin together are grouped and we just need to go into our animations and we'll click spin under the emphasis section. So now you'll see a quick preview of that and we can do the same thing with our other grouped objects and you will see that one as well. So that is really nice. We can view them together and we see that only one is happening first and then the other one is happening. So let's go ahead, open up that animation pane and we want this instead of starting on a click to start with the previous. So now we can quickly view that and you'll see that now they're both spinning. However, all of these things don't spin at the same rate. So we can change that speed as well. So let's go ahead and change the outside one here the first one, we can right click and then click on timing. So in the duration section, let's go ahead and just click one second. But now it's only gonna last for one second, so let's have this repeat at least three times. So then it's a little bit longer. Then we'll see now it's moving much faster. However, the other one, our second, the inside of our protons and our neutrons, is a little bit shorter. So we can click on that, and up here, let's just change this duration to three seconds so that they match. And now, to add in even a little bit more demonstration, let's click on that outer ring again, and into our effect options, we can change the direction of this spin. So let's have it go counterclockwise here, and now you can see a quick preview. And let's go ahead and preview this in our presentation mode. With just a click, we can show our students a small visualization of this atom. 
Now it is time for an exit animation. These exit animations come in handy when you want something to disappear off your slide before moving on to the next one. So for this example, we're going to demonstrate a Spanish conversation. We're going to have it go back and forth. This way students can take in each piece at a time, or we can even have students read out the different parts one at a time. So for this example, we have these four pieces of text. However, they're not all in the text bubble yet because we want to add in our animations first, because then we'll place them on top of each other and it'll get a little bit confusing. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Think about first the order you want all of your text to appear. So first we're going to have our man say hello. So we can click on this and we'll add in our peer animation. Next, the woman will answer. So we'll click on hers and also click appear. And now is where it gets tricky. So we want the man's first hello to disappear and his next question to appear. So we can go ahead and we'll start by adding an animation here and having his words fade to the back. And then we will start with his second response and we can go ahead and have this fade to appear. However, right now these are happening after each other. We want them to happen at the same time. So let's go ahead, open up the animation pane, right click here to start with previous. Now they will both happen at the same time. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with our woman's response here. So we'll have this one fade out and now we'll have this one fade in here. Perfect. Now let's make sure these also both happen at the same time. And then lastly, we want this man's question to then disappear so that he has space to answer the woman's question. So now for this, let's go ahead and add an animation and we can have this one fade out as well. So now everything, all the animations are done, but let's place them where we want them to go. So we want this text to appear just right on top of the other one so that they're in the same text boxes. So let's go ahead and make this one a little bit smaller. And now we can go into our presentation mode and see this in action. So one click, hello, another click, another click. One is appearing while the other is disappearing. And same for this one as well. And then lastly, that disappears and now students can go ahead and think about how they would respond to this question. Students are often left with the cognitive task of having to animate some of the material that they're learning all on their own. With the motion path animation that eliminates that task for students and instead allows them to really focus on the material that they're learning. We can do the animating for them right within PowerPoint. So for this example, we have a small physics example where students will need to determine the initial velocity the ball needs to go ahead, hit the ceiling and then come back down. So we can use the motion path animation to add some interaction to this slide. So the ball can actually move up and then come back down. So to do that, first we just go ahead and click on the ball. We can go ahead, open up our animations and scroll down to the motion path section. From here, go ahead and click lines and you'll notice that it automatically drops down first. So what we want to do is in our effect options, make this go up. So now we're halfway there, but now we have to move it in the right direction. So to do that, just go ahead, click on that red dot, that red arrow, and now we can move the ball to exactly where we want it to go. So now it reached the ceiling, but we want to also demonstrate it coming down. So let's go ahead and go to add animation. And instead of lines this time, we're gonna choose a custom path. This way the ball can go down, hit the floor, and then go into the wall. So we can go ahead, click first where the other one ended. So right in the center there, we'll draw a line down for it to hit the floor and then over to the wall. And you guys can see a short example of that once you hit the escape button. Perfect. And it didn't exactly reach the wall. So we can go ahead, click on this and move it over just a little bit. So then we see that it will actually hit the side of the slide. So now we can go and open up our animation pane and let's see a quick example of this. Okay, that looks pretty good, but there's that slight pause right at the top of the ceiling. So we can actually go ahead and change that in our effect options in the, at that animation pane. So this smooth start and smooth end, we wanna bring these back down to zero. So then that way they will flow right into each other. So that one looks good. Now we can go ahead, open up our next effect options and bring these down to zero. 
In addition, to add a little bit of more fun to this example, we can up this bounce end. So let's go ahead and just make this a 0.5. This way, our ball is gonna hit the wall and do a little bit of a bounce to make it a little bit more realistic. So we can go ahead and click OK, and we can view a short example of that. So some of these speeds is not exactly where we want it. You guys can always go into the timing here and slow or speed up one of these. So let's make this one just a little bit faster. Ooh, that might be a little too fast. Let's go back up to two. That looks good. So now we can go into our presentation mode, check this out, and I think we'll need to change the timing effect of this. So right now it goes up, but it stays there until we click again. So previously we have done a start with the previous. Now this one, we wanna start after the previous. So the first one will go, hit the ceiling, and then it'll come down, but it will play all at once. So let's go ahead into our presentation mode and do one last example of this to see how it looks for the students. Now students have a really good visualization idea of this problem. Speaking of using PowerPoint animations to help visualize change, the morph transition works wonderfully. While not technically a PowerPoint animation, it is one of my favorites and does work pretty similarly. So it is a little bit similar to the motion path animation. However, unlike motion path where everything is done all on one slide, you'll need to create different slides for each different step of this transition. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick example with the stages of a frog life cycle. So we want to show students how each stage morphs into one another. So I have the basic set up here, and then in this file, I have all of my images of the stages. So we can start with the first one. I'll put it on my slide, put it in the correct place. And then let's go ahead and click on our slide here and do Control D to duplicate this slide. So this is important so that everything else stays the same, but then we're gonna go ahead, delete this image, and now we can add in our second one for our second stage and put that where it belongs. And now I'm gonna show you guys what morph transition looks like here. So here you'll see a nice preview where they just jump from one to another. But to really enhance this, we can do one quick little step so that our shapes will better morph into one another. So to do this, let's go ahead and go on the home page here and open up our selection pane. So here's where you see where all of your items on your slide are named. Let's go ahead and click on our image to see what it is named. So this one is picture two and this one is picture 26. So we want these to be the exact same name. So let's go ahead and delete this. Plus we have to add two exclamation marks. So let's do that and name this one frog. We can just go ahead and copy this. And then here for picture two, let's go ahead, double click, and we can delete and also rename this one. So now check out what happens. When we preview this, we see that these better morph right into one another. One small change that I'm going to make is I'm going to send these images to the back. So that way they'll go behind our arrows instead of in front of them. So now let's watch that one more time and we see that transition. I think this is a really great way to demonstrate this change in this evolution of the frogs. So let's go ahead and do that for the rest of the stages of the life cycle here. So that's three more. So we can go ahead, add those in, and go ahead, delete each one of these images. And then let's go back and add them. So we'll start with number three here and now we can move it in the correct spot. You can also make this a little bit bigger if it needs to be. And we wanna change the name here. So let's go ahead, make it frog. And then lastly, we'll send it to back. So let me go ahead and do this really quick for these last two. Perfect. Now every stage is done. They all have the same name with our two exclamation marks. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning here in our presentation mode and watch our frog life cycle come to life. So let's go ahead, click. We have stage one, stage two, stage two into stage three, three into four, and now four into five. And now students can really visualize that change with this simple PowerPoint transition. 
The last animations that we're going to cover today are going to be in conjunction with PowerPoint's drawing tools. So maybe you have a touchscreen device when you're preparing for your lesson, but not when you're actually presenting. This comes in handy because then you can do all of your annotations and notes beforehand and then set some animations so that it looks like you're drawing right on screen in that moment, even though you're not. So for this example, I do have a math problem. However, like I said, you guys can use this for any point in your presentation, for any different subject, as long as you want to be annotating on your screen. So while I've already listed out some of these drawing things already, because this question was quite long, we still do need the answer. So we can go into the drawing tab here, click on the pen, and then I can just go ahead and add in our answer here. Perfect. So now all the drawing is done, we can go to the select tab and then for our animations, go to the animations tab. So again, think about the order that you want your things to appear on your screen. So we want this to go step by step to really show students every step of the problem before moving on. So our first one is gonna be this X to the third. We can go ahead and use the wipe feature here and you can see that it went from the bottom up to the top. So we can go ahead and change that in these effect options so that it goes to the left so it really looks like you're writing. And you can even change this duration over here to make it a little bit slower and add some suspense for your students to see if they got it right or not. So we can go ahead and do the same thing in the order that you want for the whole problem. So the next step is going to be this line here. And a quick fix to do this, if you're using the same animation over and over again, is to click on the one that already has all the effects and everything you want it, and click Alt-Shift-C. And now you'll see that the animation painter is lit up so that all those properties are copied, and then we can just click where we want for the same things to appear again. So we have that line. Let's go ahead down to the next line that we want to appear. Perfect. And then next is going to be this one. So you'll see it goes step by step. Let me finish up the problem and then we can look at it all at the end. Perfect, so now those animations are done. We can go into our presentation mode and we have our problem set and then click by click, we can reveal each part of the problem. This is a great way to help students just focus on each piece and then you guys can go over before moving on to the next one. So there you guys go, my favorite PowerPoint animations that are simple, quick, and easy enough to add into any of your PowerPoint presentations. Remember, don't just throw on any old animation because then it will lead to a more distracting presentation for your students. These animations should be simple enough, but yet memorable to help your students remember that information. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.